volume five of the Library of Wisdom and Compassion is being released on August 11th. And uh, so I wanted to introduce that volume to you. Okay. So volume one was approaching the Buddhist path, which was a general overview of Buddhism. Volume two, the foundation of Buddhist practice, went into some of the fundamentals uh, of Buddhism, talking about the mind, uh, rebirth, karma, you know, how we uh, have valid or reliable cognition. <clears throat> Volume three uh, was samsara, nirvana, and Buddha nature, and that talks all about samsara, nirvana, and Buddha nature, <laughs> okay? And then that leads into volume four, following in the Buddhist footsteps, uh, which has a big section about refuge at the beginning, followed by uh, the three higher trainings, higher trainings in ethical conduct, concentration, and wisdom. So there's a lot of material in all those volumes, and one leads to the next. And after volume four, then we have volume five, in, in Praise of Great Compassion. So I want to tell you what's in this volume. So like all the other volumes, um, the, li the volumes in the Library of Wisdom and Compassion contain not only the presentation according to Tibetan Buddhism, but also material about Chinese Buddhism and uh, the Pali tradition, or Theravada Buddhism, because His Holiness really wanted these books to be very inclusive. So it's really interesting to see the relationships between all the traditions and how they, uh, you know, the teachings in one tradition build on the teachings in another tradition, uh, to see at some points how they diverge in interpretation and other points about how they have different uh, interpretations that come to the same point. Okay, so like all the other preceding volumes, um, this one does the same thing. It has material from Tibetan, Chinese, and Pali tradition. So we start out with the four immeasurables, and so that uh, a lot of that is from the Pali tradition, but it overlaps completely with uh, many of the things taught in the Tibetan tradition about the four measurables. Okay, from there we go uh, on to bodhicitta and how to cultivate to bodhicitta, the, the seven-point uh, cause and effect uh, method and equalizing and exchanging self for others. So that is... Uh, from the Tibetan tradition. A chapter, Becoming a Bodhisattva, that talks about the difference between self-centeredness and uh, self-grasping ignorance, self-centeredness and self-confidence, things like that. Okay, then there's a chapter called The Homage to Great Compassion, and this uh, has the, the big explanation about Chandrakirti's um, homage at the beginning of his commentary to Nagarjuna's uh, treatise on the middle way about compassion and talking about the three types of compassion. And here he brings uh, uh, emptiness, you know, into the, the experience of compassion. It's very incredible. Okay, then aspiring and, bodhi and engaging bodhicitta, so we talk about this from both the Tibetan and the Chinese viewpoint. Yeah, so very good. And then we go into a few chapters uh, on Chinese Buddhism. Okay, so uh, the four or the five great vows, according to the Zen tradition, um, the ethical codes in Bodhisattva ethical codes in China and in Japan, um, Okay, and then a chapter on bodhicitta and bodhisattvas in the Pali tradition. And most people don't know that the Pali tradition, or Theravada Buddhism, has, a, you know, a description of the bodhisattva path. And uh, 
It's really quite beautiful. So part of that description is in this volume about how to generate bodhicitta. And in the next volume, then it goes into the six uh, or the 10 paramitas in the Tibetan tradition and the 10 paramis in the Pali tradition. So quite interesting. And then a chapter on mind training from the, t from the Tibetan tradition and the Chinese tradition. It's, it's found in both. So, uh, so that's an introduction to this volume. The cover is absolutely stupendous. Um, it is a, the photo is of a tanka, one of our friends from Singapore gifted the abbey. And so uh, you can see the uh, radiance of Chen Rezi in, in the photo. photo. It's, it's really quite beautiful. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to this volume. And uh, there's a lot of material in it, okay? It, there's like, how many pages? I think about 400 pages. Um, yeah, just about 400 pages. Has a very complete glossary. Uh, I don't know about you people, but I like good glossaries. Mm -hmm. And uh, attempting to put some of the Sanskrit and Pali and Tibetan terms in the glossary um, because it's always a challenge. I'm quite aware of this. You read material by different translators and it's on the same topic, but it sounds totally different because their vocabulary, their translation terms are completely different. So trying to put in some of the, the uh, you know, Tibetan and so on, the different terminologies, so you can find your way around that. Okay, so uh, this was actually one of my, uh, I've enjoyed writing all of the volumes. Some of them have been very, very difficult to write. This one was a real pleasure and uh, very much happiness in writing about bodhicitta. It's one of my favorite topics. Yeah. But don't think that bodhicitta is about light and love and bliss and it's just a feel-good topic. Because when you get into it, yeah, it's really hard work to generate honest-to-goodness love and compassion because we so easily are partial towards some sentient beings and prejudice against others and just to equalize the mind is difficult. And then to have the courage of a bodhisattva to act out of bodhicitta, uh, you know, putting the interest and welfare of others before one's own interest in welfare, that's not an easy thing to do. So uh, there's a lot of work to do, but also tremendous inspiration in the bodhisattva practice. So please enjoy the book.